जय गोपी जन बल जय गिरे वरधारी जय गिरे वरधारी जय गोपी जन बल्लभ जय गिरे वरधारी जय गिरे वरधारी जया सौदा नंदना जय ब्रज जन रंजन जय ब्रज जन रंजन जय यशोदानंद जय ब्रज जन रंजन जय ब्रज जन रंजन जय ब्रज जन रंजन जय यमुना तीरा बन चारे जय कुंज बिहारी जय यमुना तीर बन चारे जय कुंज बिहारी जय यमुना तीरा बन चारे जय कुंज बिहारी जय जय कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव जय कुं जय राधा माधव जय कुंज बिहारी जय ओम श्री
कृष्णपाद परमहम स परिव्राज गच्चारष्टोदरक्ष श्रीमद इज डिवाइन ग्रीस शील भय चरणारविंद भक्ति वेदांत गोस्वामी महाराज शिल प्रभुपाद की इस्कॉन बिपट संस्थापक आचार्य शिल प्रभुपाद की जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहम स परिव्राज काचार्य अष्टोदरक्ष श्रीमद इज डिवाइन ग्रीस श्रीला भक्त सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर प्रभुपाद की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की नामाचार्य शिल हरदास ठाकुर की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासदि गौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड श्री गिरिगोवर्धन की ब्रज भूमि श्री वृंदावन धाम की पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की गंगा माई जमुना माई की भक्ति देवी तुलसी महारानी की कलयुग पावन हरिनाम संकीर्तन की हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की श्रील प्रभुपा ट्रांसनल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की ताय गौर प्रेमानंदी ऑल ग्लोरिस्ट वेम्बल डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस्ट वेम्बल डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस्ट वेम्बल डिवोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस्ट रॉन्ग ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञानतिरंध से ज्ञानाजन शलाकया चक्षुर्मील येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिदस्वामी नमस्ते सरस्वती सरस्वतीदेव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातेशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो लेवन चैप्टर ट्वेंटी चैप्टर एंड टाइटल प्योर डिवोशनल सर्विस टेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी थ्री निर्विण्य विरक्त पुष्स उक्त मन त्यजती दौरात्म्यम चिंत अनुचित निर्विण्य विरक्त उक्त वेदिन मनस्तजति दौरात्म्यम चिंत अनुचित निर्विण्य विरक्त उक्त वेदिन मनस्तजति दौरात्म्यम चिंत अनुचित निर्विण्य विरक्त पुष्स उक्त वेदिन मनस्तजति दौरात्म्यम चिंत अनुचित माताजी
nirvinnasya of one who is disgusted with the illusory nature of the material world nir nirak niraktas viraktasya of one who is detached purushasya of such a person ukta vedina who is guided by the instructions of his spiritual master manaha the mind tyajati gives up dauratmyam the false identification with the material body and mind chintitasya of that which is contemplated anuchintaya by constant analysis translation and purport by disciples of his divine grace shila ac bhakti vedanta swami prabhupad when a person is disgusted with the temporary illusory nature of this world and is thus detached from it his mind guided by the instructions of his spiritual master considers again and again the nature of this world and eventually gives up the false identification with nature purport although it is difficult to control the mind by constant practice the mind can be spiritualized in krishna consciousness a sincere disciple constantly remembers the instructions of his spiritual master and thereby faces again and again the stark truth that the material world is not the ultimate reality by detachment and perseverance the mind gradually gives up its propensity towards sense gratification thus illusion loses its grip on a sincere krishna conscious devotee gradually the purified mind completely gives up the false identification with this world and transfers its attention to the spiritual platform then one is considered to be perfect in the yoga system so the 11th canto chapter 20 is entitled pure devotional service and in this particular verse it is described that when one becomes viraktasya detached because of nirvinnasya because of disgust ukta vedina and this situation he is able to achieve because of the guidance of a spiritual master manas tyajati dauratmyam so the mind which is identifying with objects of this world chintitasya anuchintaya by constant analysis anuchintaya refers to analysis by analyzing this one actually is able to give this up so therefore padma puran says ahankriti ma karasyat na karatan nishedaka tasmat namasakshetri swatantryam prati pratishidhyate that when we say the word namaha what does it mean it consists of two words na and ma so ma refers to aham and mama i and mine under the influence of false ego so ahankriti ma karasyat na karatan nishedaka so when we add the word na before ma it means we are denying the influence of the false ego and influence of mama i and mine tasmat to namasakshetri swatantram pratishidhyate so therefore conscious of the fact that i am not the doer and i am not the controller i am not the enjoyer the conditioned soul starts restricting his independence swatantram pratishidhyate to restrict and therefore how does one restrict by offering the jewel of one's independence swatantrata ratna at the lotus feet of devotees who guide us in krishna consciousness who become like our gurus 
and therefore this principle is very important yatha yathatma parimrijyate so matapunya gatha sharavana vidane tatha tatha pasyati vastu hukshma chakshus tatha evanjana samprayukta when a person has cataract and he is unable to see and when the surgeon opens those eyes he is able to see so he experiences gratitude gratitude towards the person who has helped him with this and therefore this principle is described here in this verse from padma puran and so he says bhagavat paratantra usau tadayatatma jivana tasmat swa samarth vidhim tyajet sarvam asheshita says the soul has two characteristics by nature the soul's original nature is it is bhagavat paratantra usau the soul by nature is subordinate to the supreme lord and tadayatatma jivanah and it is a natural nature is to serve so servitude and subordination are natural qualities of the soul so if the soul engages in any activity which is separate from subordination separate from servitude the anxiety begins to be experienced and therefore tasmat hence the conclusion of this verse says swa samarthya vidim whenever we are saying the word namaha when we come in front of the lord and say namaha this is not mine what we are trying to indicate is swa samarthya vidhim tyajet sarvam the kind of pride in our prowess swa samarthya that i am capable that i am responsible for this particular activity tyajet one must give that up sarvam completely asheshata without any kind of remnants that means in totality and that's the whole idea of uh, becoming servant in the mood of what is the natural constitutional nature of the soul so this is the whole idea of the word namaha that this is not mine and so anyara hrudayaman moraman brindavan manevane ekakuri jani so lord chaitanya mahaprabhu specifically appears to demonstrate one of the ways in which the mind can be completely absorbed the highest and the the most uh, amongst the all the various yoga processes that which is very very dear to krishna himself which is the path of bhakti yoga and so in that krishna demonstrates through his reciprocation with brajavasis that in brindavan you will find the highest exposition and demonstration of this principle of namaha not mine because it is very difficult to give up possessions more difficult to give up than possessions is to give up position but more difficult to give up position is one's opinion and one's desire and so in brindavan the devotees are constantly reciprocating with krishna in a mood that whatever krishna says they just accept it and therefore lord chaitanya mahaprabhu in rathyatra when he is dancing he is constantly chanting this verse ya kaumara harasa eva hivara ta eva chaitrakshipa techon malita malati surbhayo praudak kadambanila so these are the same moonlit nights of chaitra and this is the same you know reva rodasi vetasi tarutale cheta samutkandate this is the same river this is the same forest everything but i am not feeling the same experience and uh, ai shloka mahaprabhu pade bar bar swarup bina arth keh na jane apar apart from swarup damodar goswami nobody could understand the meaning of this verse 
And so Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is speaking this verse remembering the mood of Srimati Radharani. So Mahaprabhu is Srimati Radharani and Krishna together. So therefore, in separation from Krishna and Vrindavan, because when there is, you know, uh, reciprocation, then there is joy. When there is no reciprocation, then one feels a little disappointed. But when there is rejection, then there is the maximum amount of pain. So Krishna practically left Vrindavan and for more than 100 years he did not return back. So the Prajavasis were almost feeling like rejected because Krishna had said that I will come back. And so when Srimati Radharani goes to Kurukshetra and then she sees Krishna in the mood of a Kshatriya, at that point she realizes that all of my desires have been totally disappointed. Normally, a materialist is very interested in what he can get from Krishna. And as long as he gets what he wants from Krishna, he doesn't mind whatever dress Krishna is wearing. He doesn't mind whatever bhav Krishna has, as long as my work is done. But Srimati Radharani does not have even the iota of desiring anything from Krishna because she is only interested in Krishna. And therefore, this kind of non-compromising mood in only accepting Krishna in the mood of Vrindavan is a demonstration of Srimati Radharani's spotless pure devotional sentiment that I want Krishna in Vrindavan and therefore this verse which is being repeatedly quoted by Mahaprabhu says that avasheshe radha kore radha krishne kore nivedan sei tumi sei ami kore navasangam that Radharani is again and again saying my dear Lord, you have come from Dwarka, I have come from Vrindavan and we are meeting after a very long period of time. But I have to confess, Tathapi Amaraman Hore Vrindavan, Vrindavan Udayakarao Apunacharan. But still, I can only reciprocate with you in Vrindavan and please, you bring your lotus feet to Sri Vrindavan Dham. Iha Lokaranya Hati Ghoda Ratha Dhvani Taha Pushparanya Pika Nada Shuni Bhringa Pika Nada Shuni That here you have arrived with the display of tremendous power because you are the king of Dwarka. Krishna is Dwarka Dish. So therefore he is sitting on elephants. There are chariots. He has armies, weapons. Iha, Lokaranya. This looks like a city with too many people. And all of the Kshatriya warriors are here, ready to fight. The reciprocation of love is not possible. Iha, Lokaranya, Hati, Ghoda, Ratha, Dhvani. And the elephants and the horses. You cannot expect them to remain quiet and just wait for instructions. They are all shouting and screaming, going out of control. And therefore, the ambience is filled with violence. And taha pushparanya bhringa pika nada shuni. But I am aspiring to reciprocate with you in Vrindavan, where the ambience is just right for reciprocation of love. And therefore, Radharani expresses to Krishna, love is not a matter of two people physically looking at each other and coming close to each other. Physical proximity is not the principle of love. But if 
one is able to enter into someone's mind deeply that kind of absorption where the object of love is completely within one's mind and one is able to constantly meditate how can i serve you and how can i please you that is a reciprocation of love so therefore if one is not able to constantly meditate on these two principles of how can i serve and please you then one gets distracted and therefore ambience plays a major role in facilitating absorption and hence i cannot accept this ambience which is filled with symbols and symptoms of violence and therefore we will go to vrindavan on only in vrindavan where the favorable environment is there the ambience is there i will be able to absorb my mind in thinking about how to serve you and how to please you and therefore iha rajavesh sange sab kshatriya gan taha gopavesh sange murali vadan and so she says that there in vrindavan there all cowherd boys playing on flute and you are playing upon the flute and here rajavesha sange you are surrounded by powerful you know warriors and you are wearing the dress of a warrior iha rajavesha sange sab kshatriya gan and so many kshatriyas are here and therefore i do not feel comfortable and therefore shrimati radharani loses the hope because she does not find the ambience and the mood appropriate and so here as it is said krishna tatva bhakti tatva prema tatva sar bhav tatva rasa tatva lila tatva ar when one is reciprocating with the supreme personality of godhead all the tatvas come into play and so yes krishna tatva was there in the form of dwarkadish the possibility of bhakti tatva was there prema tatva is there but shrimati radharani felt that the bhav and the rasa is not appropriate for the kind of leela which i am aspiring for and therefore she became completely helpless and hopeless and in that state the gopis to assist shrimati radharani created a chariot within their mind to bring krishna from kurukshetra to shri vrindavan dham and that's basically the whole idea of rath yatra and so when you know shila prabhupad went to the west the first uh, dts shila prabhupad established is that of lord jagannath and so that basically represents krishna who is now in a mood to reciprocate with the love of shrimati radharani krishna who is transformed by emotions and the love of the brajavasis one who reciprocates with the love of his devotees and so when shila prabhupad went to the west the first deity is installed was jagannath and this was in san francisco and when they kept the deities of jagannath the installation ceremony was very simple prabhupad gave candle in different people's hand come forward take the candle in your hand and offer in circles in front of jagannath no qualification required anyone can come from any background you know no second initiated brahman initiated this that no qualification His clothes must be there <laughs> and you come and offer and then they asked how many times we should offer prabhupada said till you become tired <laughs> <laughs> and that was the very simple you know offering of lamp and then after they installed the deities next day when prabhupada came he saw that jagannath was not there on the altar 
So Prabhupada was shocked. He said, where are the Jagannath deities? And they said, we have taken him to the beach. <laughs> Prabhupada said, why did you take him to the beach? And they said, well, you only said whatever we like the most we should offer to the Lord. So we thought he is sitting here getting bored. <laughs> so let's take him to the beach. So Prabhupada said, yes, you can do that, but there is a whole ceremony called Rathyatra. And so then one thing led to the another and Jagannath Rathyatra they had just some time later in a truck. And when they were driving during the Rathyatra, that means the, the truck got stuck at some place and it would not move. And then they explained to Prabhupada that this is what happened for some time the, rath, the, the truck would not move only. Prabhupada said even in Jagannath Puri this happens. So this shows that this Rathyatra is bona fide, has been accepted by Lord Jagannath. So, you know, somebody argued with Srila Prabhupada that why you took this Jagannath Rathyatra all over the world? And Prabhupada said, he is Jagannath, not Uriyanath. <laughs> he is meant for the entire universe. He is meant to be the Lord of the whole universe. So during the British time, they tried to stop the Rathyatra many times because they could not just figure out how on that one particular day, you know, 20 lakh, 25 lakh people are coming. From where they are coming, nobody is advertising. And still people are coming, they come in the morning, go in the evening. How is it happening? And they wrote many, many articles trying to, you know, stop that. But Rathyatra did not stop in Jagannath Puri, it started in London. <laughs> by Srila Prabhupada's grace. And if you see, in the Chaitanya Charitamrat purport, Prabhupada writes this particular point, Rathera Sajani Loka Deki Chamatkar uh, that just by seeing the Rath, one becomes very astonished. So Prabhupada says, in London, in Trafalgar Square, this beautiful Rath it was rivaling even the Nelson column. So Prabhupada writes there. So therefore, some of the initial devotees had no idea also that whom we are, you know, what is this Jagannathji and all that. So one devotee wrote a letter to Prabhupada and Prabhupada replied to him saying, if you have any questions, since you are worshipping the deities, please let me know. And this devotee wrote to Prabhupada, yes, the only question I have is, I am worshipping these three different lordships can I know who they are? <laughs> so you can imagine how Srila Prabhupada established a global society at that time when communication was not as instantaneous as we are used to now. Where information was so, not so easily available and accessible. And it was practically very, very difficult to actually connect through communication channels. But still, in that 11 years, at that advanced age, Srila Prabhupada not only managed to establish ISKCON society all over the world, establish the culture of Jagannath Rathyatra in all the prominent cities, but took a break from his translating Srimad Bhagavatam and translated the Chaitanya Charitamrita and completed the whole thing and got it printed 17 volumes in only two months time right it may take some of you 20 years to go through the Chaitanya Charitamrita <laughs> which was completed in two months time and therefore uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spent 18 years in Jagannath Puri why he chose Jagannath Puri? Because that is the place where Srimati Radharani in the mood of greatest anxiety when she sees that someone is trying to help her by, bring, by bringing Krishna closer to Vrindavan she starts blessing with her causeless mercy. Because she thinks anyone who touches the rope of the Jagannath Rathyatra Srimati Radharani is overwhelmed with gratitude that he is trying to bring Krishna closer to me so that I can reciprocate. And so she bestows her 
causeless grace. And therefore Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spent 18 years within a small 10 foot by 10 foot you know, room in Gambhira demonstrating that the highest pleasure in the whole creation is not outside but it is inside. And therefore the highest pleasure is not accessible by agitating the modes of material nature but by absorbing oneself within the spiritual consciousness, Krishna consciousness. And therefore here uh, in this Jagannath Ashtakam it is described Kadachit Kalindi Tata Vipina Sangeeta Karavo that Lord Jagannath is actually in a loud concert with his flute on the banks of river Yamuna. Tarunyamrata Paravar Taranga Lavanya Sara Tateke Avarta Bhavod Gama Vamsi Dhani Chakravat Narir Manatrinapat that Krishna's playing upon his flute, it is just like a whirlpool. And it is, it, is, it is like a storm. And this dust storm, it picks up the gopis' minds and then brings it and puts it straight into the whirlpool of Krishna's beauty. Tarunyamrata Paravar Taranga Lavanya Sar Tateke Avarta Bhavod Gama Vamsi Dhani Chakravat. So the flute playing is just like the dust storm. It pulls the mind of the gopis and brings it and submerges it into the heavy current whirlpool of Krishna's beauty and they can't just come out. And therefore the principle of absorption is based on attraction. When we are attracted to something, we are automatically absorbed. And therefore, Krishna is all attractive, but the gopis experienced the highest attraction towards Krishna. Shunishwa avahito rajan api guhyam vadamite bruyu snigdhasya shishyasya guravo guhyam apyuda satamayam sarabratam nisargo uh, Maharaj Parikshit is facing death in three days. He tells Shukadeva Goswami that I want to hear, I consider myself to be the most fortunate because I am getting to hear and absorb my mind and attention. And Shukadeva Goswami congratulates him saying that because of your eagerness to hear and ability to absorb your mind and consciousness in this Harikatha, you have actually understood the essence. Satamayam sar bratam nisargo yadarthavani shruti chetasam api. With mind, with words, with intelligence, if we are able to absorb ourselves in Krishna in any form, then that's the success of the human form of life. The human form of life is given to practice absorption in Krishna. And the doorway to that success is when at the time of death, one is able to think of Krishna and enter into the spiritual world. And a whole lifetime of practice is involved in how we can remain absorbed in the midst of attraction to pleasure and aversion to pain, allurement of the ego, and attachment to our plans which may or may not get fulfilled different times but in spite of all of this if we are able to remain absorbed in Krishna that's the ultimate goal and so uttamahaya hinakuri manaha apanare hmm. achire karibe krishna karilu duhare etakohi amijabe bidai tare dila gaman kale Sanatana Kiba Prohili Kohila. So when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw Rupa and Sanatana at Ramkeli and he was kind of uh, initiating them and having a discussion with them, Vidya Bhakti Buddhivale Parama Pravin Tabu and Apanaka Manitrina Hoitehin. Rupa and Sanatana were the highest in terms of all material qualifications, still considered themselves to be very, very low. 
And so Mahaprabhu says, they are very elevated but consider themselves very fallen. This attracts my heart and this humility makes me deliver them. And he says that Krishna will deliver you very soon. And so at that point as Mahaprabhu was taking leave from Rupa and Sanatana at Ramakeli, so Gamanakale Sanatana Praheli Kohila, he just spoke something to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yarasange hoye e lok laksh koti brindavan yatra e nahi parepati. Says, my dear Lord, with straw between my teeth, I want to share with you that you are going to Brindavan from Bengal, but you are surrounded by millions of people. And this is not very appropriate because if you go with millions of people and they will all be making demands upon you and it will be impossible for you to be absorbed in the thoughts of Krishna and it will just increase distraction. And therefore, Durlabha Durgham Jai Nirjana Vrindavan Ekaki Jaiba Kiba Sange Ekajan Vrindavan is a plane meant for total absorption. Durgama Durjana Jai Nirjana Vrindavan And therefore, please understand the, the beauty of Vrindavan lies when one is able to constantly absorb our mind and attention in thinking of how to serve and please Krishna. And any factor which tries to distract our attention from this is pratikul. It is bhakti pratikul. And therefore, he says that please try to consider this fact. And so, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepts the feedback of uh, Sanatan Goswami Pad. And at that time, Dhik Dhik Apana Ke Bole Hoila Asthir. He condemns himself and then he returns back uh, via the path of Ganga, Hoila Ganga Tir, and comes back to Jagannath Puri. And he tells Gadadar Pandit, uh, Gadadar Chadi Geno Iho Dukha Paila. I left Gadadar Pandit and he felt bad. Therefore, I was not allowed to go to Shri Vrindavan Dham. So therefore, uh, Krishna is on the bank of Yamuna playing upon the flute. But the ability to absorb ourselves in the sound of that flute very much depends on how our mind is purified. And Sukshma Shweta Balupata Puline Rasam Duidike Tota Sabajena Brindavan. Lord Jagannath, when he travels from the Jagannath temple to the Gundicha temple, he is sitting on the Rath, he is seeing both the sides. So till very recent time, that whole road was made out of sand. And in fact, on both sides there were beautiful groves. And it would just, Jagannath would feel, I am just travelling through the groves of Vrindavan. Rathe chadi Jagannath karila gaman Dui parshve dekhi chali anandithaman and seeing this on both sides anticipating his entrance into Sri Vrindavan where he can be locked up in his reciprocation with the devotees who are constantly trying to serve him and please him. So this is the whole mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham. Prabhupada was in Chennai and you know some scholar came and he started arguing with Prabhupada about Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita that in your Bhagavad Gita in this particular verse something is mentioned but you are actually translating it as bhakti or devotion. Krishna is saying like this you are saying like this. Prabhupada said, oh really? Which verse is that? And then he showed him the verse. Prabhupada said, anything else? And he took out another verse. And he said, here Krishna is saying like this. Swamiji, you are saying like this. Prabhupada said, anywhere else? He said, yes, here Krishna is saying like this. You are saying like this. And devotees were wondering, why Prabhupada is encouraging so much? You know, he could be uh, actually giving arguments 
and stopping the scholar and saying so many things, but Prabhupada just went patiently. Anything else you want to comment on? Yes, Krishna says here, you are saying like this. And this went on for one hour. And the devotees are waiting and waiting and waiting and nothing happened. And finally, Srila Prabhupada, you know, gave him prasad and he left. When the scholar left, the devotees asked Prabhupada that they were, all of his arguments were so flawed. Why were you just hearing and asking him anywhere else, anywhere else? You could have argued with him. Prabhupada said for one hour, he was chanting Krishna's holy name. Krishna said here, Krishna said here, Krishna said here, Krishna said here. That was his, you know, attachment to the name of Krishna and that will purify him. And therefore Krishna appears in his name and when Mahaprabhu is having this dialogue with Sarabhom Bhattacharya, at that point Mahaprabhu says, Aji Moila Sarvo Aji Moila Purna Hoila Sarva Abhilash Sarabhomer Hoila Mahaprasadir Vishwas. All of my desires have become fulfilled today. Why? Sarvam Bhattacharya has developed faith in Mahaprasad. You know, and Mahaprabhu is in ecstasy. Now you and me may think that we already have a lot of faith <laughs> in Mahaprasad. So looks like we are pleasing Mahaprabhu a lot. But Sarabham Bhattacharya coming from impersonalist background, he start respecting the personality of the Lord. Like that. So, Prabhupada was going to Moscow and uh, Shamsundar Prabhu, he was accompanying Srila Prabhupada. And so they had heard that, you know, it was a communist period in the early 70s and uh, they, it may not be appropriate to take the Gita. So Shamsundar Prabhu kept the Gita outside from his suitcase. And he said, he thought, it's not good to take the Gita if they feel that we are taking this in and so they, I, we may get into trouble. And so he packed his suitcase and kept the Gita outside on the side and then he went preparing for his journey. And then finally his wife came and she thought, oh the Gita is kept outside. Looks like my husband forgot the Gita outside. So she took the Gita, put it inside and packed it. And Shamsundar Prabhu didn't know. So then, you know, he got the suitcase, he went, they landed in Moscow at customs. He said, open the suitcase. So he all confidently opened the suitcase. As soon as he opened, thada, Gita is there. And he started thinking, oh my God, definitely she must have done it. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be in trouble. Or they're going to arrest me and this and that. So they took the Gita in their hand and said, what is this? And they opened, and as soon as they opened, there were some pictures, you know, of Krishna and Prabhupada and everything. Those pictures fell on the ground. And when they fell on the ground, Shamsana Prabhu said, What have you done? My pictures, they are worshipable and this and that. He made a big scene. So the officers there got bewildered. They said, Oh, we are sorry, we are sorry, we are sorry, please don't feel offended. <laughs> and they took all the pictures, put it back in the Gita, placed it inside, and the Gita entered into the Soviet Union. And from that point onwards, the Gita was being copied by the devotees in the initial days. And they were copying it and making the copies. They were hand copying it and distributing. And they were coming together and hearing. And so in a place where practically there was no idea about what is bhakti? The personal philosophy became so prominent. Krishna consciousness became so powerfully established. And so when, you know, the communist regime fell, at that point, one of the first billboards which came up in Moscow was Bhagavad Gita as it is, by the Bhagavad Gita. So therefore, through this, Translations and purport, Srila Prabhupada established Krishna as a person who has his own abode of Sri Vrindavan. 
And so, Mudabhiri Nari Vadana Kamala Swada Madhupa. That uh, he is like a bumblebee tasting the beautiful lotus like faces of the cowherd damsels of Braja. So, therefore, Bhagavatam says, Nityot Savam Natitrapur Drishivir Pibantyo Naryo Narascha Mudita Kupitani Mescha. Their level of absorption in reciprocating with Krishna is so much that even if the eyelids act as a barrier for a few moments, for a fraction of a moment, they become disturbed, thinking that it is hindering our absorption in Krishna. And therefore, they are saying, Naryo Narascha Mudita Kupita Nimescha. And the gopis start criticizing the creator. Brahma, what nonsensical design is this? That the eyelids have been created on top of this. So the gopis are praying, Dehasmriti nahiyar samsar kupa yahatar taha hoite na chahe udhar viraha samudra jale kama timingile gile gopigana neha tarapar That they are saying that we are drowning in an ocean of separation from you and the whales of separation is completely consuming us viraha samudra jale kama timingale gale so the desire to associate with you is like this whale in the ocean of the whirlpool of separation and so lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is continuously uh, singing and dancing in front of jagannath in the mood of the gopis of Sri Vrindavan. Rama Shambhu Brahma Amara Pati Ganesha Archita Pado. Krishna in Vrindavan is being served by the Brajavasis, but the great personalities as Lakshmi, Shiva, Brahma, Indra, they are aspiring to worship his lotus feet. Brahma Rama Shambhu Brahma Amara Pati Ganesha Archita Yadarchitam Brahma Bhavadivi Surai Shriyacha Devya Municha Satvate Go Charayananu Charish Charadvane Yad Gopikanam Kuchakum Kumankitam Krishna and Vrindavan is so unique that although Yadarchitam Brahma Bhavadivi Surai Brahma Shivji and 330 million demigods are wanting to serve Krishna's lotus feet. Shriyacha Devya Munecha Satvate Lakshmi Shri. She is aspiring to serve Krishna's lotus feet. She is performing tapasya so that she can ultimately serve Krishna's lotus feet. And what those lotus feet of Krishna are doing? Those lotus feet of Krishna are going behind the cows and the calves of Vrindavan. Go charayananu charish charadvane. And so Krishna in Vrindavan is constantly in the mood to reciprocate and serve with the devotees' love. And therefore none of the symbols of power are there in Sri Vrindavan. Krishna has given power in the hands of those who appear to be not so powerful. Brindadevi, the Tulasi plant, becomes extremely powerful. The cow becomes extremely powerful. And Krishna himself engages in serving to show that in Vrindavan, power has been granted only to Prema, to the feeling of pure love. So Shrushaya, Paramaya, Pada Samvahana Dibhi Pujito Deva Devena Vipra Devena Devavat Even Sudamaji he acknowledges this that Krishna is reciprocating me with me in Dwaraka although he is worshipped by all the demigods but he has overpowered me with his reciprocation of love Shobhute Vishwabhavena Swasukhe Nabi Vandita Jagama Swalayam Tata Pathim Anuvraja Nandita and therefore the respectful love which Krishna shares with me has bound me completely, captivated me and transformed me. 
and so this is the love of Sri Vrindavan which Krishna is constantly aspiring for. This is the highest and therefore Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to distribute this Aradya Bhagavan Brajeshatanaya Taddhama Vrindavanam to experience that love of Vrindavan and Brahma gets bewildered in this plane because Brahma with all his intelligence is unable to understand Krishna's glory in Vrindavan and so after he goes through the Vimohan Leela he prays to the Lord Tadastume natasa bhuri bhaga bhavitra vanyatra tuvati rascham yenaham ekopi bhavad jananam I have only one desire to simply become one amongst your devotees just like I see the Prajvasis reciprocating with you with so much love and affection. Aho bhagyam, aho bhagyam, nanda gopa prajokasam. Yanamitram paramanandam. They are reciprocating as if they are your friend. And therefore, I do not want power. I do not want control. I do not want this kind of a position of being Brahma. Yenaham ekopi bhavajjananam bhutva nisheve. Tava padapallavam. Give me an opportunity to be with your devotees so that I can constantly meditate on how to serve you and how I can please you. So that's the whole idea of Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy. That following in the footsteps of the residents of Vrindavan, how we can constantly try to serve and please Krishna. And therefore, in the Chaitanya Charitamrit, you see like the highest exposition of that demonstrated through Mahaprabhu's pastime. Like there was uh, one uh, student who was born in a Gaudiya Vaishnava family. His mother was like connected to, his grandmother was connected to Gaudiya Mat and everything. So she, he, he saw her grandmother constantly worshipping Mahaprabhu, doing Kirtan and everything. But it just didn't occur to him that there is something special here. And because he saw it happening at his home right from his childhood, he took it for granted. Then he went to study abroad, he went to New Zealand and as he was studying there, he came across somebody who was distributing books. And so what happened by this time as he was studying as a student, he got very much inspired, you know, by all of his other colleagues and classmates who were all, you know, studying various kinds of philosophies. So he thought, oh, everybody is into some philosophy. I should also follow some philosophy. So one of the most popular philosophies there in the campus that time was Korean Buddhism. So he was like studying Korean Buddhism and having philosophy of that and everything. So when he met this lady on the street who was a book distributor, so he looked at her and he asked her that, oh, you appear to be from Southeast Asia. She said, yes. So he said, uh, where are you from? She said, I'm from Korea. He said, oh, wow, you're from Korea. That's what I'm going through right now. I'm studying Korean Buddhism. And he looked at this lady devotee and said, and what are you following? She said, I follow Gaudiya Vaishnavism. <laughs> and he got bewildered. And he said, why? That is what my grandmother was always doing. She said, well, she was very, very, very advanced, that means. So she gave him the Gita, took the Gita, got connected to the, you know, temple, and now he's initiated devotee. So sometimes it may appear, oh, people are just having kartals and murdang and going around doing Prabhat Feri, Harinam Sankirtan, day and night they are chanting, what is the big deal, doesn't appear something very deep and philosophical. But behind that is this very powerful philosophy embedded in the pages of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita as to why Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was doing what he was doing. Bhuje Savya Venum Shirasi Shiki Picham Kotitate so he wears peacock feathers and on his hips he wears fine yellow silken cloth. Okay, so when Krishna 
is in Vrindavan. So he has this typical way of calling out to all of his associates, especially the cows, by playing upon the flute. Vama Bahukrata Vama Kapolo Valgita Brur Adharpita Venam Koma Langulibhir Ashita Margam Gopya Irayati Yatra Mukunda. So the gopis are enchanted by Krishna's flute playing. And as he's playing upon the flute, he's calling upon everyone to come and associate with him and reciprocate. And when the Raslila, Krishna is separated from the gopis. And they are crying the, the Gopi Geet and at the end when Krishna finally manifests, the Gopis are totally enchanted when they see Krishna's beautiful form. Tasam avirabhut shauri smayamana mukham buja pitambara dhara sragvi sakshan manmatha manmatha That beautiful form of Krishna with the yellowish uh, garments pitambara dhara sragvi and wearing a beautiful garland of forest flowers. Sakshan Manmatha Manmatha. It was as if Cupid personified was enchanted and attracted by Krishna's beauty. And therefore, this uh, beautiful playing of Krishna's flute manifests in Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastime in the form of Harinam Sankirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Chaudiketa Sabaloka Bole Hari Hari, Prema Veshe Madhye Nritya Kare Gaur Hari. Agyamala Paya Harshe Namaskar Kuri, Anande Dakshina Deshe Chale Gaur Hari. Matta Simha Praya Prabhu Korila Gaman Prema Veshe Jai Kuri Nama Sankirtan So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has made it possible for those in this age of Kali to experience growing attraction towards Krishna by the process of Harinam Sankirtan So therefore Mahaprabhu's mission is ultimately in distribution of Krishna Nam Krishna Katha and Krishna Prasad. Because when Krishna Naam is there, the holy name is there, attraction may not be there. One may have so many questions. Why should I chant? So to answer that, there is Krishna Katha, philosophy, to explain with logic, with reason. Krishna Naam is there, Krishna Prasad is there, still the Krishna Katha is there, still one has so many other doubts and so many other priorities. Why should I follow? Why should I follow? Okay, for them Krishna Prasad is there. Because very few people will ask the question. <laughs> right? When you show Gita, they will say, what is behind this philosophy? Then you will have to give long explanation. If you give Gulab Jamun, nobody asks, what is behind this? <laughs> what is behind this? Only ecstasy. <laughs> right? In California, uh, there was a radio show and the host of this radio show was known to be extremely aggressive. So, one time one devotee was invited for this radio show and all the other devotees told him, don't go, don't go. This person is very aggressive and he insults the people whom he calls and he'll rip him apart, he'll rip you apart, it's not good. He says, no, no, we have been invited to go for preaching, we should go. Whatever will happen, will happen, but I'll take the astra with me, Mangalarti sweets. <laughs> so he took a whole tray of Mangalarti sweets. He entered the studio, as soon as this person was an infamous host, opened the door, he looked at the tray and said, what is this you have brought? And he opened and he saw the Mangalarti sweets. The radio show host immediately grabbed the tray and said, come in. So he first took the tray with him, got the devotee, made him sit down, put a table in front, put the tray in front. And then he told this devotee, normally in my show, I am continuously asking questions back and forth. But today, since... 
this very attractive plate is in front of me, I'll introduce you and give you the floor. You go ahead and speak whatever you like for 10 minutes. <laughs> and don't disturb me, I'll be busy with this. <laughs> and he just did that. And the devotee got his platform and he spoke Krishna conscious like anything. And then after 10 minutes, there were a few minutes of questions. People could call and some started asking aggressive question and challenging this devotee. And this host was busy, radio show host was busy honoring Prasad. He stopped and he took the mic and he said, who is the hell who is asking this question? Do you really know what you are asking? And then he went on defending the devotee. <laughs> and when the show was over, this devotee asked this radio show host that, you are famous for ripping apart the people whom you call for your radio show and asking aggressive questions. But you are so supportive and you are, you know, so much helping in this whole thing. What, what's the whole idea? He said, well, you know what? When I was in college, I did not have much money. And practically, the free prasadam distribution on the campus which ISKCON was doing, that is what helped me fill my belly for few years. And my mother has taught me, never bite the hand that feeds you. <laughs> so therefore, Kangalera bhojan ranga dekhe gaura hari, hari bol voli tare upadeshi gari. When Mahaprabhu sees the prasadam being distributed in Jagannath Puri, in Balagandi, Mahaprabhu turns to uh, servant Govinda and says, that you not only distribute this prasadam, but also make them chant the holy names. Kangalera bhojan range, the poor people were eating prasad. When Mahaprabhu saw that, he just said, okay, you are eating and you are filling your belly, that is fine, it will eradicate your hunger, it will not eradicate your distress. You have to chant the holy names and realize, Jeev Krishnadas, Evishwas, Karle, Ar Dukhanai. And then when you realize that, yes, my pleasure and my happiness is only in this, that I am a servant of Krishna. So therefore, when Krishna plays upon his flute, he is inviting everybody, come and serve me and try to please me and experience pleasure. Dukulam netrante sahachari kataksham vidadhate. And from the corners of his eyes, he bestows sidelong glances upon his loving devotees. Okay, so uh, Akrurji says that Maivam Mamadhamasyapi Hyad Evachuta Hriya Mana Kalanadya Kochit Tarati Kashchana. The jiva is just, you know, trying to speculate how to get pleasure in life and is going through distress. And as the river of time factor is dragging him along, only by some good fortune, Kvachit Tarati Kashchana, he comes and gets connected to the bank of the association of devotees. And therefore, when one comes in front of Krishna and glances upon the deities, the deities are also glancing upon the devotee. Chandrika Vishadasmere sa aruna apanga vikshitai svakarthanam ivaraja Satvabhyam Srishtri Palaka. The more important principle in coming to the temple and taking darshan of the deities is to be glanced upon by the deities. So the eyes of Krishna, the glance of Krishna creates desires to serve within the heart of the devotee. When the devotee starts serving and starts experiencing difficulties and challenges in his service, he feels discouraged. The smile of Krishna encourages the devotee, saying that, I am with you. And all of these impediments I am placing in your life is simply to test you that when you are going through this difficulty and distress, are you getting distracted from thinking about me? This is simply a test to prepare you for the final moment where the greatest pain of various diseases and the biting of 42,000 scorpions will force you to forget me 
at that time if you are able to remember me that will be your success if at the highest moment of highest pain you have to remember me you have to start getting used to going through regular pain and still remember me and therefore svakarthanam ivaraja satvabhyam srishtripalaka and so shuni mahaprabhu kahe hoya vismay madhyapa yavanera chitta icche ke kare so when lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is dealing with this governor who is a drunkard completely intoxicated and dealing with so much of you know violence he hears about mahaprabhu's kirtan he becomes enchanted attracted and come and wants to take darshan of mahaprabhu so the vishwas the secretary uh, of uh, prataprudra maharaj who's there with mahaprabhu he is astounded that this governor wants to take darshan of mahaprabhu madhyapa yavaner chitta icche ke kare what did mahaprabhu do he has not even seen him he only heard about the kirtan and so he says apne mahaprabhu tar man phiraila darshan e smarane yar jagat tarila that lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is so powerful that simply by hearing about him and hearing about the kirtan apne mahaprabhu tar man phiraila he can transform the heart transform the mind darshane jagate yar darshane smarane whether one sees the lord or one does not see one simply remembers jagat tarila one is actually uh, mahaprabhu is actually able to deliver the world simply by his remembrance so when one hears about lord chaitanya mahaprabhu's past times when one hears about mahaprabhu's reciprocation that also has a powerful transformative effect uh there was a sailor who was traveling in you know a cruise ship and the cruise ship it docked here somewhere in mumbai and the sailor came out and he was you know roaming in the mumbai city and he really wanted a plant because he wanted some greenery in the ship in his cabin so he started searching for some plant and then you know in one of the plant shops they gave him a plant he didn't know what that plant was he brought it and kept it in his uh, room and he was giving it water every day and that was a tulsi plant he didn't know about that mysteriously you know in a couple of months time he started feeling his desire for meat eating and intoxication going away and all his friends were getting bewildered are from where such detachment is coming and then the tulsi plant was like becoming dry because it couldn't last within you know that kind of environment in a ship and so in one of the ports when he came out and he was walking one book distributor met him and gave him a bhagavad gita so he took the gita you know came to his room kept it next day again he was moving in the city again this book distributor met him and he asked him did you read the book he said no so he said please read it he said okay yeah he went so the next day again he was roaming in another part of city somehow this book distributor met him there also <laughs> and he was thinking are this guy is all pervading <laughs> and he said again did you read the book he said are baba no and he said you must read the book it is really good and he went on went on he said okay okay i'll read don't worry the height was next day when he went again he met <laughs> and this time he thought i can't now get into this argument so he said let me just speak a lie he said yes yes i read the book the book distributor said how did you find it and he said well some parts of the book were okay other parts were not so okay but okay i am okay the book distributor said whoever reads this book there are only two categories either someone gets totally attracted to it and others totally reject it nobody is in the middle that means you have not read it <laughs> <laughs> so he said oh my god this is too much <laughs> so he went back started reading and he started connecting with the philosophy 
and now he is the head pujari of one of the temples in Europe. So, Sada Srimad Brindavana Vasati Leela Parichayo. That is what is described here that he reveals himself through his pastimes in his divine abode of Vrindavan. Okay. What does this basically mean? That he is looking for reciprocating with souls who are eager to serve him. Okay. Vrindavana Govardhan Yamuna Pulinavan Saisaba Rasadika Lila Sai Brajer Brajajan Matapita Bandugan Badachitra Kemane Pasarila. Radharani and the gopis, when Akurura took Krishna away, they came to that spot, and the spot where they did not cross beyond, and they just saw Krishna going away until the last speck of dust being raised by the hooves of the horses till it settled down they were just standing there as if thunderbolt has struck them that place is called Vidyutvali because the gopis experience was like a thunderbolt striking so separation from Krishna was like that but they continued serving therefore to test different objects in this world there are various parameters you can test gold with a gold stone. You can test the strength of iron through various tests. You can test health of a person through you know, various blood tests and various kinds of MRIs. Like that, if one has to test the quality and the intensity of love, uncertainty and separation tests love like nothing else and therefore the gopis went through the greatest uncertainty and the greatest separation but they continued wanting to serve Krishna and that is what here Radharani is saying Vidagdha Mridu Satgun Sushila Snigdha Karun Tumi Tomar Nahi Doshabhas O Krishna the Shastras describe you as Vidagdha expert, mridu, very soft, satgun, filled with all kinds of good qualities, sushila, highly well-behaved, snigdha, soft-hearted, karuna, you are ocean of compassion, shastras has millions of shlokas glorifying you as compassionate. If we start accusing you that you are hard-hearted, we will be anti-shastra. And therefore, you are all this. But tumi tumar nahi doshabas. Therefore, you not coming to Vrindavan and giving us your association, you are not at fault. How can you be at fault? You are compassion personified. So you not coming here and giving us association is Tabu, uh, he says that Tabu ye tomaraman nahesmare brajajan If your mind could never remember brajavasis for so many years, Nahis Mare Brajajan. Why? Say Amara Durdaiva Vilas. It is because of our bad karma that in your mind our thoughts did not come. Therefore, you cannot be at fault because you are a Sushila, Snigdha Karun. And therefore, you know, in this mood, Nagani Apanaduk Dekhi Prajesh Parimuk Brajajanir Hrde Bidare. Radharani is saying, if not me, at least look at the face of. Yashoda and see the permanent lines created by continuous flow of tears from our eyes. And by seeing that at least you should realize that although you have left us for more than 100 years, we have not stopped remembering you even for one moment and we have never stopped asking the question how to serve you and how to please you. Pariksha karite gopal koila agyadan pariksha hoila sheshe hoila dayavan Bahu Parishrama Chandana Remuna Anila Ananda Badila Mane Dukkana Ganila. And therefore, when there is separation, when there is uncertainty, and still the relationship continues, and the thoughts of the beloved continue, permeating the mind of the lover, 
and such thoughts flow just like the continuous flow of honey or oil then there is the presence of love and so to experience love is a very high tall order and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes to demonstrate how this experience of love is possible in this age of Kali and he models himself in a way so that we can try to follow in his footsteps and that's the whole idea of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spending time in Jagannath Puri participating in Jagannath Rath Yatra and reminding all of us that the ultimate secret to happiness in the human form of life is this kind of absorption in Krishna in all circumstances and that's why Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spent 18 years in Jagannath Puri spending every moment in ever increasing depths of absorption as chronicled by Kaviraj Goswami in his magnum opus Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita and so Kaviraj Goswami says that Sheshalilar Sutragan Kari Kichu Vivaran Iha Vistarita Chitta Hoye Thaake Jadi Ayushesh Vistariba Lila Shesh Jadi Mahaprabhur Kripa Hoye He says the problem with all of you is you take time for granted you feel lot of time is available I am 95 years old I don't have time but whether it is time or money or infrastructure or assets or resources Bhakti is not dependent on anything external it is simply dependent on the intensity of the will, of the desire and therefore Iha Vistarite Chitta Hoi I have intense desire to make sure that the world gets to hear about Mahaprabhu's pastimes Thaake Jadi Ayushesh Vistariba Lila Shesh if somehow Mahaprabhu out of his kripa allows me to live longer then I will explain in more detail but bhakti is not about quantity, magnitude it is not in terms of how much we can do but it depends on the quality and I have an intense pure desire to make sure that the future generations hear all about the Antilila at least in sutra form Sheshalilar sutra gan kari kichu vivaran and therefore I want to make sure that I take every breath as valuable an opportunity to serve an opportunity to serve is a privilege not a burden and therefore as I am getting this opportunity at this ripe old age of 95 I want to ensure that every breath is used in glorifying Mahaprabhu's pastime and let me not take anything for granted and therefore he has the beautiful description of Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri which Vrindavan Das Thakur could not describe in so much detail in Chaitanya Bhagavat so we are very uh, fortunate to be in this wonderful association of devotees thanks to his divine grace Prabhupada establishing ISKCON society across the world simply for the purpose to facilitate and encourage each one of us to come and realize that the purpose of a temple, purpose of a satsang is not to pray to be protected from distress but the satsang exists so that we can come and pray to Krishna to protect us from distraction so that we remain completely absorbed in Krishna in the midst of all kinds of pleasure or pain and that absorption is what Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to demonstrate and share with all of us that absorption completely overpowers all the different kinds of distracting tendencies of the mind and this absorption is the highest and the sweetest as described in the ultimate descriptions of Vyasdev in Srimad Bhagavatam Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.
so the best part of the class is what I'm going to announce. That on 9th July, we are going to have a special guest for the Srimad Bhagavatam class. Tuesday, 9th July, will be honored by the presence of His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. So please try to come and take advantage of his association during the Bhagavatam class. Morning around 8.15. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, there is an announcement. Today's Sunday breakfast prasad is sponsored by Mr. Sanjay Thakkar on the occasion of his birthday.